everybody, Sassy Biggins here from Big Crafter, and I finally thought that I should make a how to knit video. If I'm going to be doing all these other crafting videos, blogs, whatever, I should at least show you some basics. Um, I know there's a lot of other videos out there, but I find that crafters, once they find something that they like, they have a tendency of sticking with it. So... If y'all are going to follow, I might as well show y'all how I do stuff. Um, or just have me get better at making these kinds of videos. Um, I find that the biggest drawback to most crafting, whether it's knitting, crochet, whatever, is the self-judgment, the self-doubt, the assumption that if you try something, you'll get a better or more perfect result. No, that's not a guarantee. Um, a lot of people assume that their hands have muscle memory, which last time I checked, it takes 21 days to make a habit. And so many people just give up before they get anywhere with it, or they didn't research it enough, or they didn't reach out for help, or my favorite is whenever you go on Facebook, just look up knitting needles. I'd say 20 to 30 percent of all knitting needles are shoved into a ball of yarn with the label still on it and someone's trying to sell it for eight or nine dollars because that's what they paid for it. Newsflash, you ain't gonna get that. <laughs> it's Facebook Marketplace. Uh, secondly, this is about being artistic. This is about self-forgiveness. This is somewhat about perfection, but at the same time, they don't. most people don't go far enough to know what perfection is supposed to look like. They just say, oh, I can't get past a washcloth and then throw it. I'm like, well, one washcloth can turn into five washcloths, which can turn into a scarf. And then long strips of scarf can turn into afghan. And next thing you know, you got pictures of people knitting things big enough to fit on their car. So, once you get past the emotionality of art, <laughs> you can get down to the technical ability of art. Which is what knitting, crochet, all the fiber art is. It can be very, very technical. Just don't scare yourself by looking at a lace pattern chart. That thing even makes my eyes swim. But someone somewhere had to create it because that's the skill level they were at because they worked really, really hard at it. I'll give them like, just all the more power to them. God bless. I don't know if I'm necessarily that advanced. I mean, I know I'm close, but... Is that my goal with my art? No. I like experimenting in different ways. For me, it is about the science behind the art more than just, can I make pretty things? Yay! I like it to be structurally sound. I like to play around a lot of different fibers. That's why I recycle stuff so much is I wanna know what it'll do in my hands and not in a machine's hands. Uh, I wanna know its washability or using harder stuff with thin, smaller stitches, or how can I change something that's really thick and make it thinner because it has a better chance of surviving over time and through more washes. And that's just how I like to play with it. I like to play with it. If you cannot play, good luck with any art form. It's whatever you teach yourself to be comfortable with. So it's time to get comfy for grabbing a pair of needles. These I just grabbed at random. These are called circulars. They also have like the nice big th stick ones. Those are just straight needles. They each do serve a purpose. These I grabbed because they're short and I can fit them on a table. Uh, straight needles, it depends how long they are. It's a slightly different hand motion, but if you get used to using them, they can be just as effective. 
I know people who like to knit in their laps like this prefer shorts, but I've been able to do this with long ones too. And it's just a matter of, did you figure out a better method for you? I figured out better methods for me. Do other people do that? No. Do they have to? No. They buy whatever the heck they want. It's a free country. Because I checked yesterday. <laughs> but um, I believe these are a size 10. They're a little bit thicker. I picked the size 10 because it will go with our lightweight, chunky, red heart yarn. Uh, this is the most generic acrylic yarn out there, but it's also one of the most washable. It will. This, this is the stuff that will never die. I have an afghan that I made when I was 15. It's made out of this. It will never die. <laughs> so that's called Red Heart, which is very similar to the polyester known as Quran. Another very basic, cheaper end type yarn, but for learning you can't beat it it does what you want it to do it won't there's no funny business there, you don't have to worry about it splitting very much because the twist is so good um, it has decent stretch to it um, it's you know the workhorse of yarns it's a good thing to start with it may not be the softest, but worry about soft later. Just get technical first, and once you get past technical, have fun, baby. And now we'll learn about the knot. Okay. Here we have our size 10 needles. These are the circulars. And then we're going to start with how to make a knot. It's the most basic thing. You take it, you twist it, and then you grab the part that's attached to the ball. And then there you go. You know it's right because you can do this. So you know it's right. So if you need to rewind or anything, this is the spot to do it. This is how you make your loop. Then, we stick a needle in that. This is just one of many, many, many different kinds of cast-ons, but this one is the easiest to remember because it's the most like knitting. Because knitting is literally two sticks with loop inside of loop. You'll see what I mean. You have your two sticks. Right now you have one loop. We put left over right. This is the right handed right throwing method they do have left-handed versions and i'm not very good at them one of them's called continental um there are videos out there of it and you gotta be a special kind of person to knit and purl to continental and i'm actually for me i'm actually faster right-handed but that's just what i learned on so that's what i got better at as the years went on because i didn't teach myself continental until like last year I've been knitting since I was 13, so it's been a while. So, but here we go. Left over right. I just also see how I hold the yarn here. How it's twisted around. This works for me. Works, do whatever works for you. But this is just me being me. So, finger goes around, puts it in the middle. Here's where the right needle goes inside and pushes it out. Then we put it over the top. This is loop inside of loop. Repeat five million times. <laughs> I know people say, oh, you're oversimplifying it. No, I'm not. You get two sticks. It's left over right. Goes in the middle. The right needle pushes the loop from inside the other loop. Do you need to re fast rewind, watch again? Go ahead. It's a free country, no one will know. And then we tighten that up. Also, look at how I'm holding my needles. This is just how I do it. You could figure out a better way for yourself, but this is just what I do. 
And whenever I want to loosen a stitch up, I literally, I just roll it on the needle like this and it does what I need it to do because I tight, I have a very tight knitting style. It's very, very tight. It goes there, goes through the middle. Loop inside of loop, put over top. We do this until we have enough. This is what you do for when you start a washcloth, you start a scarf, you start anything. This is one of the many, many, many types of cast-ons. Loop inside of loop. And then when this is done, we'll show you the continued variations of all the ways you can put loop inside of loop. <laughs> I know it sounds repetitious, but it's true. Yes. Yeah, eventually you'll get faster. Like see, I loosen it up, I stick it in, left over right, goes through the middle. Now I don't care that I'm going this slow. Knitting is not supposed to be about speed. It's supposed to be about did you make what you wanted? I don't care if it takes you five freaking years. Just don't tell people it took five years. They don't know unless you tell them. So just be proud of what you do for whatever it is that you do end up making. Now, each piece is a learning experience. Let it be truly a learning experience and forgive yourself if there's any mistakes. Or in my world, there's this thing called a squaw mark which is a mistake in your work that you leave there on purpose so that you know that the piece you made is yours and only yours. So I believe in squaw marks. If it's not, if it doesn't truly ruin the integrity of the piece, don't tell them anything's wrong with it. Tell them it's perfect. It's like your children. You know every single flaw that's in your kids. But do you t like advertise it to the world if you don't have to? No. I mean, your kids love you more if you don't. We loosen it up. We stick it in. We roll it over the top. Loop inside of loop with a stick. Now, that's all I feel like doing for this. Because then the next step, if you want to stop, get a drink of water, breathe. I believe I've gone over every single variation so far. Okay, still with my hands holding like this, still with the yarn being twisted like this. I loosen it up with my finger. And just like regular cast on, I you do make the loop, but instead of it going over the top, you flip it off. And then you go in the next one. In the middle, Pulls through, flip it off. Left on top of right, goes through the middle. Right pushes it through the hole. Loop inside of loop with two sticks where you get to flip it off. <laughs> There's a lot of other knitting jokes too in the world. <laughs> Knitters have a very good sense of humor. Now this one I know I can do almost as tight as I want because the needles are a little bit bigger than the yarn needs to be, but I did it because this would show up really, really good on camera. So like if there's black yarn, you wouldn't be able to see this as well because you need to know what it looks like. You need to know that this is the cast on row. You need to know how this, the way the stitches sit on the needle is how it is twisted and how it is twisted will tell you how to deal with the stitch it's a map you're basically making your own map that you have to follow and that's very very important so you know where to go it's like this right now is still all garter stitch this is still knitting as they say this is just garter stitch I do not know how many stitches I put on here. It doesn't matter because as soon as we're done here, I'm ripping it all out. That's another thing. People are so afraid of making mistakes. Like, just rip it out and redo it. No one's going to know. Who cares? It's your journey, not theirs. But yes, here we have our first row. This is what it looks like. 
This is what the back side looks like. The back side is that nice bubbly garter stuff. Or it also can look like pearl. Pearl is the opposite of knit. We'll eventually get there. But right now, we're just knitting. This is just garter. This is so that you can make as many pot holders and washcloths as you want. <laughs> or just a lot of squares that you can sew together to make afghans and such. Now this first stitch does have a tendency of being too loose. So I'm always retightening my stitches no matter what. And you choke it up, you put it, most of the work is just on the tip. So try to keep it choked up as best as you can. Same thing. See how if it's tight enough, your needles don't move. And this is why I can get away with this. Not, I don't actually touch it. It's just all the yarn. It's all controlled by the left hand. And then it still feels a little bit loose to me from what it's doing. So I'll just stick it in there. But while that's held, I tighten it up. Because this works for me. Then I know I go up here. And that way you're not left with all this super loose, uneven stitches drives me nuts having that it's the only time i'm truly anal retentive is in my edges i like a perfect square man i really do and we just do the same thing you know same looking stitch you still go under left over right you still put the loop in the middle and then you use the right needle to push the loop inside the loop repeat five million times over the projects you will be making when you are inspired so heavily by this video. <laughs> All right, sarcasm, but eventually over time, like the hands don't really move much, it's the same thing. I still keep it tight in my left hand so that the right hand truly does control the gauge. Engage is what happens when you correctly control all the stitches across all the fabric to get something and it will curl a bit and that's one of the side effects of tight stitches but when it lays flat it'll be wonderful that's what we have so far and we just keep doing this until usually if you're knitting anything it's good to give it a garter border so it doesn't curl because if you start purling and you mix them together, it will curl. Or just think of this as a really basic and ordinary knit along. <laughs> Essentially, it's what it is. So, starts off like it always does knit, or left over right. So, I tighten it up before I go, put it through the middle. Using loop inside of loop with sticks. Loop inside of loop with sticks. And you get to flip it off at the end. <laughs> oh, also I should probably point out. This is what we call going through the front of the stitch. Because it goes under that bottom. That goes to the front. If you go back here, this is the back of the stitch. That is meant for some other time. Because as long as it's done this way, you don't get a twisted stitch. And twisted stitches just mean you get a tighter stitch. And tighter stitches, once you add them all up, can give you a totally different gauge. And gauge is how the fabric spreads out. How much, like, does it, is it the same size? Is it the size that you want it to be? And if it's a big enough item, it can matter. But usually you try to avoid twisted stitches when you're doing stockinette. And stockinette is one row purl, one row knit or garter. One row knit, one row garter. Or no, one row garter, one row pearl. Garter, pearl, garter, pearl, garter. And that's how you do stockinette. But yeah, here we go. That's that chunky lined that's your basic basic knitting stitch 
Now, you'll always see this when you go to knit when you have garter. It makes those raised, bumpy lines. I will now show you to purl. It's a different version of loop inside of loop with sticks. Okay, when you knit or garter, you go up through here. With purl, you go down through there. Totally different. You go down through there. And then see how you go up with it. This is the exact opposite of knit. Go through the top. Your yarn is in the front. And if you ever do have knit purl, knit purl, you do have to switch it from the front to the back. That's how you get something called baby garter. It's one of my favorites. Pain in the ass, but it's one of my favorites. And so we go through the front from the top. Loop goes through with the stick. The right one's always, at least in my hands, it's always the right one making the loop inside of the loop. My hands do get a little bit more tense, or they hold it a little bit differently when I'm purling. Because I have to let it go to make it go round. To where my right needle just it hangs more, but my tight gauge lets it hang more, so... It's just different muscles, totally different muscles than knitting. And anyone who can do continental does this so much faster, but I have no clue how they do it. And the muscles in my hands are not agreeable. <laughs> I don't know why I'm trying. It don't work for me so far. Okay, this is what they call the backside. It still looks like garter. But since I did pearl, you can start to see the V that's in there. It's like what you see normally in sweaters and t-shirts. That's the knit that you see in most manufactured items. And since the last row was pearl, we will now knit. But to make it stay flat, most people just know, okay, when you normally knit, you go in here, but you'll twist your stitch. Most people don't want you to do that, especially if you're doing color work. So instead of going here, you go through this back loop and you go down. Back loop, down. If you need to memorize, just, just memorize that. I tighten it up a little bit because your edges can get really soupy. I hate that. But still pull it through, flip it off. And then you have continued V's. We go down to that back, tighten it up a little bit. Right one pulls it through. We go up, we still have it. Same thing. Loop inside a loop with two sticks. <laughs> we go through the back, because we're still making sure there's no twisted stitches with this type of knitting. And this is what you just keep doing forever and ever. And this is how you get stockinette. Which is the fabric with all the V's. And I'll show you in a second. Like I said, t-shirts are made out of stockinette. All the socks are made out of stockinette. Stockinette makes the world go round, baby. Alright. Uh, if you do pick a yarn, you can uh, even the lighter colors will let you physically see the stitches better. A lighter variegated will also be very stimulating to the creative process. Okay, let me just highlight this some more. We see that V pattern starting. Oh, where is this thing? So all the V's are in there. It's going very flat. That's what we want. We want flat. So garter and knitting. And then every other row, knit, purl, knit, purl. Or garter, purl, garter, purl, whatever. And it's only when you do stock and net for the knitting that you, do, you go through the back loop to stop it from twisting. Otherwise, you don't need to bother, bother with garter. 
See, it's getting loose again. It's getting soupy. I hate it when it does that. That's why I probably have such a tight gauge is because of that. This is not cool. I do not like it. I do not say I am. So there. When it's crisscrossed, I tighten up as hard as I can. This is pearl. Cause, okay, this is a pearl row. See how there's no V's? No V's means we pearl. And how that comes out, I hate it. If it's too loose, so just tighten it up when it's crisscross. And then you just pull it through. Just do this over and over. tighten it up because it's always a beginning row. They're always looser than they need to be. And then still, it's the left hand with the gauge controlling where that needle goes. So the right one can drop when I'm not using it. If anyone needs to put this in slow motion, <laughs> I don't know how much slower I can go, but, but it's still, this is pearl, so it's through the top, loop, pull it through, and then flip it off. I hear it's very good for anger management. <laughs> Okay, get near an end again, so make sure it's tight enough and not too loose, so it doesn't get soupy. I hate it when it gets like that. Okay, this is our pearl side. This is our knit side. See how that's a lovely, lovely, actually it be easier this way, the V-stitch. Okay, that is probably all you will ever need to most basically know about knitting. That's it. There's nothing else special about it. It's just needles and loops, needles and loops, repeat. And knowing whether you're going from the bottom to the top or wherever else, and you go from the back when you're doing stockinette and don't want to twist your stitch. Because twisting the stitch just makes it tighter and harder to work with. And that's it. Uh, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. I should be doing more tutorials or even just blog stuff from the crazy stuff that I work with and any new ideas I come up with or what I've recycled last. Or I'm still debating if I should make that Angora into uh, a pillowcase. I mean, Angora yarn. Angora yarn. <laughs> Not an animal. But I did have those as a kid. Anyhow, thank you very much for being here. Happy learning. Forgive yourself. This is what it is to rip it. As in rip it, rip it from a frog. Or in knitting, you rip it, rip it. How many of you just died inside? But no, it's perfectly all right. I can make more. I have made so much more knitting after ripping things that it's a secret power to be able to do this and not die inside. I'll get used to it. All right, if you pull that loop through the end when you're knitting, it will make a knot. <laughs> Otherwise, it does come undone if you don't flip it when you're knitting. <laughs>